Mission Hill is a really special series. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything like it, and even the recommendations you get when you look for something similar, like undergrads or downtown, they feel more like distant cousins than spiritual sisters. When I watched it last year, it became an instant favorite. There are so many things that I love about this gem of adult animation, from its gorgeous color palettes to its city environment bursting with personality to its societal attitudes. But at the heart of this show is the brotherly relationship between the two main characters. And the pilot does a fantastic job of setting it up alongside everything else. That's what we're gonna dive into today. Welcome back to Perfect Pilots, a series on my channel where we examine some of the best first episodes of TV out there, some that are household names, and some that flew under the radar, and we try to understand what makes them so great. After the first two episodes about Scrubs and Futurama, these are the parameters I'm going with. A perfect pilot familiarizes the viewer with its characters and their environment. It gives the viewer an accurate preview of the philosophy of the series. It sets the stakes and demonstrates the tone of the series dramatic, comedic, mysterious, etc. It hooks you in and makes you want to keep watching. And as discovered over the last two videos, a lot of perfect pilots communicate the humanity of the characters, their experiences of finding love, community, and their place in the world through their relationships to each other and their adventures. Because many of the best stories ever told are, at their core, universally relatable. I'm not a TV writer, I'm just a multi-hyphenate creative spending too much time editing my thoughts into complicated PowerPoints and posting them on the internet. But I have aspirations of making my own animated series someday, so alongside serving as entertainment for you and maybe giving you something new to watch, I hope these videos will serve as a study for me on how to do this thing right and what can be learned from some of TV's best. <laughs> Mission Hill is an adult animation sitcom dramedy that ran on the WB from September 1999 to July 2000, and then on Adult Swim from May to August of 2002. The show was created by Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein, who had executive produced and show run The Simpsons, with the artistic designer Lauren McMullen, who had directed for The Critic and King of the Hill. It was originally titled The Downtowners, but it was forced into the name change due to MTV's series Downtown. The show's airing had unfortunate timing, as the WB was changing their branding, so the series was actually put on hiatus after airing two episodes due to poor ratings, and then it aired four episodes in the summer of 2000 before it was cancelled outright. Right. Although only six episodes ended up airing on the WB, 13 of the planned 18 episodes had been produced, and the series ended up garnering a cult following after runs on Teletoon, Adult Swim, and a late night block on TBS called Too Funny to Sleep. The series stars Andy French, a 24-year-old aspiring cartoonist living with his friends Jim and Posey in a hip neighborhood called Mission Hill, located in a large city akin to New York or Chicago called Cosmopolis. Mission Hill was said to be inspired by places like Wicker Park in Chicago, Williamsburg in Brooklyn, and Silver Lake in Los Angeles, although these places are surely much different than they were when the show was created due to gentrification. I saw it happen with my own eyes in Chicago. Anyway, significant work was put into developing the city into a believable place, with effort put into creating fictional advertisements, foods, bus schedules, and bands. Andy's comfortable slacker lifestyle is upturned when he goes to pick up his dog from his parents' house and is surprised with the news that his 17-year-old brother Kevin is moving in with him and his friends Posey and Jim. The series focuses on the adventures of this gang, alongside Andy's co-worker and love interest Gwen, and their fellow building residents, including the older gay couple Gus and Wally, and young parents Carlos and Natalie. So he's a party animal. A sneak peek, Mission Hill, after Buffy. Catch a sneak peek Tuesday at 9 on the WB11. By Mission Hill Tuesday on DVD. Got something for me? Sure. How's this? For the slacker in all of us. Loser. 13 hilarious episodes and behind the scene extras. Mission Hill, the complete series. Buy it Tuesday on DVD. Mission Hill doesn't have a cold open. The show begins with the theme song, in an adorable sequence introducing each of the main characters as they dance to an instrumental, slightly sped up version of the song Italian Leather Sofa by Cake. It's a really charming sequence that gives you a feel for the vibes of the show and tells you who's who in a short amount of time. I love it. 
While the series is about Andy and his brother and their relationship, we get to focus on him as the series opens. The first scene is at his place of work, a mattress store, zoomed in on his name tag to tell us who he is, as he asks to leave early to go have dinner with his family in the suburbs and is yelled at to stay late doing inventory, while his boss goes on a date with a woman he immediately objectifies. Andy's response to this is to lock him inside of his office so all the employees can go home. And in the next shot, Andy's coworker asks him out on a date and they agree to go to his party that weekend as a pair. And then we see a gorgeous scene of Andy walking through Mission Hill. I absolutely adore this shot. The colors of the buildings and the people, the way he weaves through bikers and dog walkers, passing Dave's occult bookstore and an ad for semen martinis, observing the people around him and just straight up vibing before arriving at his apartment building. He runs into his neighbor and offers to help her with groceries. They bump into more neighbors in the elevator and then we meet Andy's best friend Jim and get a look at their apartment. Four minutes in, they leave to go have dinner with Andy's parents and pick up his beer-drinking dog, which, unbeknownst to them, will bring Andy's brother Kevin into their lives and change everything. But before this change, the show takes the time to show us how Andy lives. He's got a job he hates, he lives with his best friend since high school, and he knows his neighbors. He's content and comfortable, and his dating life is on the upswing, and that makes the events of the episode have a much stronger impact. They talk the same talk. You are whack! You don't know what that means, do you? They walk the same walk. Don't you love that new binder smell? Yes, my fondest high school memory. That and getting Two brothers with nothing in common until now. Are we going to be your roommates? From producers of The Simpsons. Who wants to get it on? You are so lame. Mission Hill, coming this fall to the WB Friday Night. introduction is set up to make you think a certain way about him and his friends. He's a slacker. He's working a dead-end job instead of pursuing a career. He drinks and watches TV when he's off work. He's barely even motivated enough to show interest in his coworker. He can't stand his brother, and he's generally a bit reckless. So his friends must be the same, right? But his arc in this episode is about taking responsibility for his brother. First by letting him move in, then by teaching him about freedom, allowing him to swear and do other things he couldn't do with his parents. Then by showing up for him at school when Kevin gets in trouble for calling his teacher a douchebag. And ultimately, by stepping away from the beautiful girl in front of him to go rescue his brother from his first experience getting sloshed and making sure he recovers okay. The time spent at the beginning of the episode showing you Andy's cushy, slacker lifestyle, contrasted with the scenes of them fighting in their parents' house and on the car ride home, set you up to think that Andy doesn't have what it takes to step up and serve as a guardian. That he and Kevin are going to fight consistently the entire show. But instead, as you watch, you're rewarded with a much more nuanced take on a sibling relationship. Andy is 24, and Kevin is 17. If we assume that Andy went to college at 18, he's been away from home since Kevin was 11 years old. And he seems to ultimately feel a need to protect his younger brother and take on a quasi-parental role in Kevin's life, attending PTA meetings and serving as a stand-in for their parents as Kevin navigates new experiences and new freedom in the city. Andy's actions, alongside the characterization of the cast at large, expertly subvert your first impressions. No one is flat or one note. When you meet him, Jim seems like a burnout on the same level as Andy, but he owns a car and drives Andy places, and later on you find out he actually holds down a high-level executive job at a marketing firm. Posey's voice and way of speaking make her seem like a hippie granola girl nutcase, but she runs a garden, sells her produce to make money, and is also a licensed massage therapist and a successful puppeteer of the group in an unfinished episode, ultimately being much smarter than one might assume. In Andy's relationship with his coworker Gwen, you expect him to prioritize her or getting laid over everything, only to see him choose his brother on multiple occasions, to varying degrees of reactions on Gwen's end. I'm going to save my thoughts on Gwen for another video, though. 
Gus and Wally broke boundaries simply by being an unapologetically gay couple on TV in this era. More nuanced than most depictions on TV at the time, even if some of their scenes, or more specifically the way straight characters talk to them, may raise eyebrows now. And to me, upon first watch, Kevin became the most surprising subversion of all. He's the epitome of a geeky and annoying kid brother when we meet him, reacting strongly at the realization that he's going to be living with a girl, having his SAT scores printed on a shirt, constantly calling their parents to tell on Andy for doing normal adult things, and generally at odds with his older brother, but he quickly diverts this two-dimensional portrait as we learn the truth of the situation. That Kevin is socially lost and looks up to his brother as a source of truth for what it means to be cool, how to navigate social spheres in high school, and what it means to be an adult who knows what they're doing and has their life figured out. He looks to him for advice and guidance even as he pokes and prods at him. And the kicker is that Andy feels just as lost as his brother, just in more grown-up ways, his career, his romantic endeavors. Kevin and Andy are set up to hate each other, but at the heart of the show is their brotherhood, their commonalities. Kevin learns a lot from watching and living with his older brother. Attention swimmers, we've got a brand new show. It's called Mission Hill. Every time somebody put down a cup, your dog ran up and drank it. <laughs> Premieres next Sunday at 11 on Adult Swim. Attention swimmers, we've got Mission Hill. We could decorate the gym with bales of hay and have a hoedown. We got a fourth hose. I've got more important things to do than obsess over women. Hey, my concubines are here. Mm. How would you like to be on the real world? What, me? Come on. I'm not MTV material. Hell, I'm barely WB material. Mission Hill, a night at 1.30 on Adult Swim. Mission Hill is a lighthearted, vibey, hilarious, and offbeat sitcom, but it's also a series that thrusts its characters into unforeseen circumstances in each episode, revealing at its core a theme of connection and enduring love despite interpersonal differences. No one is flat or one note. They all feel like real people, even if they are silly or exaggerated. There are a million reasons to love this series. It had a really fun soundtrack with songs from Pavement, R.E.M., The Flaming Lips, Moby, and more classics from the era. The track Burning Flies by Looper from the pilot in that scene when Andy's walking through Mission Hill is one of my personal favorites. It's a delight to feast your eyes on. It was actually one of the last animated shows to use traditional hand-painted cells for animation. And as a result, its movement is gorgeously imperfect, its colors organically intense, and forming a cohesive palette. Its team devoted so much time and energy into making the world feel real and building out the environment as a passive character. It gave its older gay couple Gus and Wally such fleshed out personalities and curated storylines that it won a GLAAD award, even being one of the first shows to ever feature a gay kiss scene. In fact, they were so well written that there isn't a single stereotyped gay entry on the show's TV tropes page, and I read through that entire thing. Its jokes are laugh out loud funny and off kilter enough to make you wonder how they came up with or even got away with it while simultaneously avoiding taking cheap pot shots at any specific marginalized groups. And that is something that is oh so hard to find in adult animation from the early 2000s. Mission Hill knew what it was and had the vibes nailed down from the very beginning. The result is a fantastic pilot that makes me laugh, warms my heart, and makes me want to slap the next episode button immediately. I'm not sure that I'll ever get tired of it, and I hope that if you haven't seen it yet, this video made you want to give it a try. It's a rare gem amongst a sea of mid-shows, and somehow it's readily available on YouTube at the time of posting this. It's a travesty that only six of the episodes were originally aired, and I'm so glad the rest of them got visibility on Adult Swim. And I do wish the last five episodes that weren't fully produced had gotten their chance. I think I'd like to make a video on those unfinished episodes as well as a video on how they treated Gwen's character. So if those ideas interest you, let me know in the comments. I'd also love to hear about your relationship to this show and what it meant to you if you've had the joy of watching it. And with that, I'll see you next time for a very special video. Stay hydrated, take care of yourself, tell your friends you love them, and we'll talk again soon.
kind of a weird question.